the key to the heart that is monkey monkey talk is our madhvi batula every week we bring you a guest a family a talk an institution an organization a business that talks from their heart shares inputs their struggles their challenges their wins their losses their jubilations their celebrations all here on monkey talkies as adults we face lots of challenges i'm sure you're saying everybody faces that at every stage of life the challenges are different puberty has its own issues pms has its own issues pregnancy has its own issues first job own issues divorce marriages children in whatever order they come in your life grief even joy has its own issues every time a situation comes in life who is the first person you go to to talk about we assume our parents we assume it could be our coworkers we assume it could be that friend of ours from kindergarten and sometimes we assume that we talk to ourselves there is no right there is no wrong but then suddenly an incident happens in your life and then the perspectives the challenges the answers the questions come in plenty here i am today joined by shilpa kulkarni president and co-founder of shift thirds i an organization that's go to talk about mental well being welcome shilpa to monkey talkies how are you i'm good thank you madhvi thank you for having me here i started the program by talking about the issues that we face who is the first person we talk to when we have an issue you are a mom you are a business woman you have had your own stages of life you were a newly married woman at some point a new mom also and then life took its turn to where you are today you have founded this organization shifts third eye let's start by asking you what is this organization about absolutely thank you so shifts third eye is really um it's an organization uh in memory of my son shiv mm-hmm. whom we lost to mental health to suicide Mm-hmm. 3 years and 2 months back mm-hmm. um in july of 2021 so mm-hmm. and we founded the organization uh in his memory to continue his legacy and especially to help other children so that there are no more shifts in this world as much as possible um you know for youth mental health it, the organization is actually active we work towards the youth mental health and wellness awareness mm-hmm. and education as mm-hmm. well as lgbtq allyship okay so shilpa you talking about your son shiv's legacy now our viewers would want to know how old was shiv when you decided this organization needs to come up so shiv was 14 years old when we lost him in mm-hmm. one month he would have been 15 he would have turned 15 he would have July 29 2021 he would have within a month he would have started his high school freshman year and uh, we lost him so his life was cut short because of that okay now position was formed in march or april of 2022 2022 a year later so you talk, you used couple of words here one is mental well being mental health the other is legacy of shiv now when you say legacy of shiv what does it come and what does we what does it define how do you define legacy of shiv so legacy of shiv uh, is actually so shiv uh, for to understand what would be the legacy of shiv you have to understand what shiv was like mm-hmm. um shiv obviously i'm i'm the mom so i'm partial to uh, him but anybody who knew shiv would tell you probably similar stuff and we still keep hearing about it even to the to this day we kind of hear about it from different different people about their experiences with him in his short life mm-hmm. um he was a very very bright academically very smart but very sweet very kind hearted and as well as 
sporty i wouldn't say he was sporty in the sense of he would never go for contact sports but he was very sporty and competitive in the sports that he chose which is table tennis and volleyball mm -hmm. so things like that but he was a very good piano player um he was very much interested in art so he was multifaceted mm -hmm. and he was a typical 14 year old uh, with his being a brother to his a younger sister uh huh that's so, a bit of what you're talking about because that is a normal kid that we talk uh, there are definitions of it sometimes we don't know what is normal and what is not but when you look at a typical household we look at a happy family where two kids you know their typical school routines and their extracurricular activities they have their good days they have their bad days they have their fights with their mom they have their fight with the sibling so this is a legacy we are talking about a talk a typical legacy of a teenage boy and then you use the word mental health and well-being now when you want to associate that word with shiv's legacy where does it match and where does it clash and where was the red flag for you absolutely so this was what i just told you about shiv's background but plus mm -hmm. shiv was not just the regular teenager because unlike most of the teenagers who can be very obnoxious at times i mean i know that because i have another daughter also <laughs> so i don't mind saying that but he was actually like a perfect child you know almost like somebody you would think that oh my god this is the child that i want always mm -hmm. um and not just me like some friends would say oh you have no problems with chef so he was like that but internally he was actually going through a very very huge turmoil big trouble big internal struggle mm -hmm. which we did not understand because he didn't want us to know about it he didn't want the world to know about it and this mm -hmm. we don't even really know how long that was going on but mm -hmm. it was definitely going on for a longer time considering the intensity with which he when we realized it so about Eight months before we lost him, mm -hmm. accidentally we come across. I came across some message, which, uh, you know, which sort of encouraged me to ask him right away, openly, Shiv, mm -hmm. are you gay? Mm -hmm. And that kind of brought a lot of, uh, you know, different emotions from him, mm -hmm. uh, including probably that one of shame because he started crying, mm -hmm. and then that. i wouldn't even say that is where the journey started but that was the beginning because then we asked maybe we ourselves don't know what to do about this we do not mm -hmm. we are not familiar with this mm -hmm. do you want to speak to a therapist and that's how our journey kind of started and one thing led to another and within two months two and a half months he was diagnosed with mdd which is called major depressive disorder which mm -hmm. was completely a shock to us mm -hmm. because we didn't even know what is mdd what what are we talking about and then within 6 months of that diagnosis we lost him uh, he went during that 6 months he went through a lot of therapies he went through hospitalization he went through a lot um because his illness was very very intense his uh, ideation his uh, you know actual depression was extreme and we didn't know and that's where we kind of feel very we felt very um you know helpless because we thought we are giving him everything possible we had psychiatrist we had private psychiatrist we had um psychologist we had like dance therapist we had a, a yoga therapist we had like uh, you know different hypnotherapist like you know it and then obviously being uh from india indian background we had multiple pujas here in india all kinds of thing okay. uh, some sort of like which we would never have thought about like i'm not a huge religious person but mm -hmm. you know when you are in trouble you would want to do right. anything and everything and that's what i would tell shiv that it doesn't matter let's just try everything possible something will work and so this, we, this this um this entire timeline of things that's happening how beautifully it started with a young boy his 
regular routines and you know uh, being an young elder brother to his sister and the regular routines of life and suddenly eight months before this biggest tragedy for any parent to hit it happened and the timeline for you to even comprehend something is happening but even in those eight to six months that you had time you went across to know whatever is available to help your child and that is exactly friends today we are talking about mental health and wellness that is required as a parent we sometimes assume that we know everything about the children as friends we assume that we know everything that's happening in our friend's house or in their lives but there are certain corners certain aspects where the person, whether it's a child or an adult, is still not ready to speak about it. Um, just before we started this conversation with Shilpa here on Monkey Talkies, off the camera, oh, I was talking to her and we had this conversation about, uh, we have the right to know. And Shilpa just mentioned about when she came to know about it, a note or a text that she read. I'm not sure whether she was ready to get that information at that time in life or the child was ready to share at that time. So Shilpa, I want you to emphasize on this aspect of it. Did you at that day feel that you were ready to know about it? You were ready to talk about it? Or you had the right to know everything that your child was going through? So I guess, uh, as I mentioned it to you, Madhvi, it's mm -hmm. not, I I never thought of myself to be ready or not. Mm -hmm. Because me, and I think I'm pretty sure a lot of South Asian parents is like, if I'm a parent, my child has to, I have to know everything about my child and mm -hmm. I will do whatever it takes. But we don't realize that I will do whatever it takes doesn't mean anything if I'm not equipped with the knowledge or the ways I can help child. And mm -hmm. we always think that, you know, somehow our generation, the way we grew up, that's how that was the best way to grow up. And that okay. can be, I'm not debating that. But mm -hmm. unfortunately for our children and somewhat fortunately, maybe their world is very different from ours. Mm -hmm. And in that world, just going the way we go about parenting, like, you know, sort of, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Like just push through is what mm -hmm. we go through right like we especially in our in our family's case we thought that we are always going to be open up with our kids about everything we would talk about money we would talk about education we would talk about books we would talk about economist politics everything but mm -hmm. we never spoke about mental health because that was one topic that we never were exposed to and things that are very difficult, we don't want to really talk about it because we thought, think it's not going to hit us. It's not our thing. My child is never going to feel like that. LGBTQ, again, it's the same thing. I don't think we ever spoke about it. Did we mm -hmm. make one of the people? We, did we, were we actually condescending? Probably not so much, but maybe inadvertently, yes, because you have seen Bollywood movies around us. Absolutely, you yeah. have seen, like, there are comments when we are in a social setting, how mm -hmm. people talk about it. And it, it, it happens so easily. It happens so naturally in our cases that we don't even think twice. I wasn't sensitive about that at all before. Mm -hmm. I became that when I, when it hit us. And that's where I'm saying that I just didn't know what I didn't know. So how am I supposed to help my child if I didn't know? If mm -hmm. I'm not an expert in this, how mm -hmm. should I really be? And just knowing what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Am I going to do, my, is my response going to be right for him? Or mm -hmm. is it going to make it worse for him? Beautiful. Okay, that was a good question that you put across even to the viewers. You know, when you have this question about, I need to know everything about what's happening in my child's life and my spouse's life and my parents' life. Once you know, what next? What next is a question. And that is how beautifully Shilpa has now shared with her personal experience, the journey that she had with Shiv. And when she came to know about Shiv's secret, if, we, I, would, if I could take it with due respect. And then what happened after that? 
So when we talk about mental well-being, mental health, uh, very rightly said, Shilpa, whether it's movies, whether it's a social connotations of conversations, the sniggers, the jokes, which are sometimes very, very harmless. But a third person, uh, a tender mind that's listening to it is still processing from their level of understanding. OK, my parent or my aunt or my grandmother is not ready to accept this part of the information. It could be anything. Now, mental wellness also talks about something like, you know, uh, women talk about PMS. They also talk about postpartum depression. Oh, we took care of six kids. We never had yeah. something. But thankfully today, the information, the support groups are so very strong. More and more women, more and more children, more and more employees or men are also coming on and saying, you know what, this hurts. Emotionally, it hurts. It's, there's a burden. So speaking helps in, a, in many, many ways. Now let's talk about this organization, Chef's Third Eye. What is the agenda? What is the mission? Uh, how are you progressing in this organization? And uh, tell me some stories, some stories that bring smile to your face, that give you strength to continue with this legacy, this thought, and this beautiful journey that Shiv had. Absolutely. So I think uh, so. the point of the organization, as I mentioned, the mission is really uh, increase education and awareness about youth mental health and wellness mm -hmm. and provide support to the families as well as youth on that uh, front uh, and LGBT and encourage LGBTQ allyship, even make people understand about it. So mm -hmm. from that perspective, um, we actually... Pretty early on, we started two uh, signature events, kind of. It has become organically. And most of these efforts became very, very uh, big organically. So we started uh, within two months of our um, being there uh, as an organization. Uh, June was coming up and mm -hmm. June being the Pride Month, we started Pride Picnic. Mm -hmm. And the Pride Picnic is like there are many Pride events that happen in multiple different towns. Mm -hmm. But this particular one, I felt like it was just a year before that I had spoken to Shiv about it. And that was a month before his passing. Mm -hmm. And so we had talked about it and we were trying to find mentors for him that time. Mm -hmm. um, because I always felt like he that was one aspect of his struggle that he wasn't ready to talk to anybody including mm -hmm. the therapist and i we were trying to do as much as we could so mm -hmm. we thought mentors would really help because somebody who is lgbtq and he once he sees somebody successful because he was a very ambitious boy so mm -hmm. if he sees somebody successful uh, in their life he will feel like he has hope too um so when we went and met with somebody in New York City, uh -huh. they spoke to him about uh, Pride uh, Parade in New York City. And uh -huh. Shiv was very hesitant. And then he said, no, mom, I'm not ready. And I realized that now when I think about New York City Parade, it's not a really, I mean, it might be great for kids who are LGBTQ, but somehow LGBTQ or not, there are there is an age for everything appropriateness mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i think some of these things are not appropriate for those kids okay. whoever you are it doesn't matter and that so that's what i thought that if we had something like that in our local area which is very family friendly which is very simple uh -huh. nothing to do with the sexual connotation or anything like that or overtones mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then the kids are going to feel like they belong. They belong. They, the comfort yeah, level is there to see around. Okay. That's exactly. Nice. So that's how we started the Pride Picnic. And now it has become quite big in our town. Um, many businesses come together. A lot of people come in together. And we just have amazing stories. So we hear a lot of stories throughout those uh, like three years. And mm -hmm. one story that puts really great smile. I mean, I feel like. I I really feel like I did something good by Chef by mm -hmm. through this story because there is this girl who was actually the very first year when we started she came with her mom and I didn't know her and the mom mm -hmm. kind of said you know yeah my daughter just wants to help this time 
and then she is going to go so i said yeah that's perfect like we were setting up she was there and then she just became so happy so happy later i got to know that she's a trans girl and the mom told me that last 3 years she it just didn't want to get out of the house she was a high schooler she did was so socially anxious she didn't want to get out and one even she wasn't ready to come to the pride picnic but once she came she felt so comfortable there she was the last one to leave the picnic you, you know, know this also comes back to what you just said you know there is age appropriate things the age appropriate whether it's entertainment information talks and we are so bombarded with all kinds of information which is not required at a certain age and children of course at a tender age are so confused and especially when they are having their own identity that when they're going through phases of puberty and when you just said about the pride parade versus a pride picnic the picnic word itself brings so much of comfort and so much of coziness around it that you are giving the safe haven for so many children or so many young adults and youth who are still in a confused state and with due respect there are so many culturally different countries who are still not very acceptable about what's happening uh, to this body in on a regular day or an stressful day everybody yes. says deal with it aur ye sabke sath hota hai so uh, keeping the word picnic is so so very comforting um, uh, i must thank you and congratulate you and also in this hard time um, watching other children going through something there there must be so many trigger of emotions that come to you every time oh i could have done this or i could have done that better now i also want to take this opportunity to ask you a very simple question you're talking about mental health and mental well being right how are you and your family coping up with that how do you take yeah. care of it? yeah so i think we got uh, i mean thanks to chef that we got really uh, exposed to therapy we none of us we ever had therapy in our life before It's right it's a stigma uh, right most it is a stigma it. because we i don't think before chef went through this i ever believed in therapy neither did my husband like therapy that is complete stupidity what are you going to go and do and talk to and a, a person and them. just give them money for what what are they going to do to you and there are still a lot of people who do not believe in it for their own reasons because they haven't been exposed or they haven't suffered any of this stuff but i think i believe in therapy very much especially for kids i believe it so much more because i feel when especially the kids are going through their growing years when they are going through puberty the stressors in their life are so hard they do not know where to turn to and it's like you know i give that example we go and we get i mean we me and my husband we both are engineers we are fairly good college is good background we consider ourselves to be like one of the good minds right and i'm pretty sure we can teach our children everything but when it comes to that children never learn from us we always end up getting outside help even college counseling for example a lot of people go out and do the college counseling aren't we smart enough i mean come on we came from india from the competitive world of india Mm-hmm. if we are like i always tell vishwa ashev and sanvi we used it's like you guys are by design good test takers you don't that's have to worry yeah. about it like mm-hmm. that's the thing for us right so same thing but we still go for counseling counselor why because it helps sometimes it helps for the kids to get that message from a third person right. therapy works the same way mm-hmm. you know the children is nev- child is never going to tell the real thoughts or real feelings with the parents they are not going to share we didn't share as kids if we remember i don't think i ever told my mom or dad anything what was going on in my mind sure, sure. but if they go and speak to an a responsible adult a you know an expert somebody who is educated to handle that and then guide them what's mm-hmm. wrong with that i would rather that that happens so that their thought process builds 
properly around their, and their you know resilience built slowly i would rather that so anyway coming back to how we are taking care of ourselves we we have gone through therapy um especially for me and my daughter i think we have continued the therapy my mm -hmm. husband did initially his way of coping is he goes out and plays volleyball three times a week mm -hmm. and he goes out with his friends so that's his way of so we have each found our way coping mechanism mm -hmm. and then what is common for all three of us is the work that we do for shiv sardai so friends, when we started this program, the first sentence which I said is, when you have an issue, whom do you go to? Whom do you talk to? Your parent, your friend, your colleague, or your co-worker, anybody. But you don't know who is there, who's ready to accept the information that you are sharing. Many times, like just now Shilpa mentioned, in our growing years, we have not shared everything with our parents. We thought that we can handle it ourselves. Or maybe sometimes we thought that our parents are not in a position to handle this even a small thing like you know i like somebody i want to marry somebody people have thought a million times before sharing it with their parents this is a very simple and i think a safe example that i can give in today's time now coming to uh, shift's third eye that's a beautiful name of an organization uh, i would definitely at some point want to know how you name that but right now tell me about all the people who are associated with this organization who are the members here who are the uh, apart from you being the president and co-founder yeah who are a panel of people who are involved with this organization and this event that's happening on Sunday. Uh, please let our viewers know how to participate, be part of this event on Sunday. Yeah, so absolutely. So the uh, organization people are me, my husband, my daughter, and some of Shiv's friends are on the youth, uh, you know, board. But more than that, a lot of our community members. So we have a board. Our community has been, has really uh, you know, um, rising up to it, and they have really helped us to mm -hmm. find, uh, you know, step up and actually help us in the organization part of it. Mm -hmm. Um, the second event that I was mentioning, apart from Pride Picnic, that we started off in the very first year, the second thing that we started off was Youth Mental Wellness Fair, and. Mm -hmm. Again, it came out of our ex own experience. As I mentioned to you, in six months, we tried to give a lot of help to Chef, but it was all based on our searches, like Google searches, plus it was COVID times. We couldn't, um, you know, see anybody in person. Everything was online. Plus, none of our friends had gone through any of this. So we didn't know anybody whom, whom to talk to was our biggest challenge. And from that, our learning was very steep, very, very fast. We had to do it and we still didn't learn so fast. Like it was impossible for us to even process that information. And that's where we thought that if we can try and give this knowledge to the parents right now, not mm -hmm. when it hits you, but mm -hmm. before that, before when you don't have a problem, you just know about different stages of kids, you know, what could be a problem or how can we even simple thing is during the puberty years or during teenage years, communication between parents and children, they, it breaks down. Sometimes uh -huh. it is just regular teenage angst. Sometimes it goes beyond that. So how do you even manage that? How do you keep your relationship with your child through the teenage years? in the best possible place. So all of these things, and then what kind of resources are available in around you, in the society, in say, in your local area, outside of school or inside school. We were asked to do IEP. I don't know how many people know about it. We didn't know anything about IEP, 504, whatever, all those accommodations that are talked about in the school. What does it mean even? There are counselors in the school. I didn't know what the counselor's job is. I just thought they are just there to be there because we never took any help from the school counselors. Mm -hmm. So these things, and we thought that if we can bring in all of these people in a fair, in a very mm -hmm. simple environment, in a fun environment, maybe the community can just go out there and talk to these people, the experts. And how many times, say, I have a question. 
I can't really pick up the phone and call the doctor or a therapist and ask mm -hmm. that simple question. Mm -hmm. And then I would never do it because it's just there is such a barrier to entry. So this way, if they come out in open or they are in the panels, then we are able to they become accessible and the awareness and education goes so much further for parents, for even children. It becomes mm -hmm. a normalized thing, getting help, reaching out for accessing your help or resources around you is okay for the children they and they google, can it's not necessary that google is always your friend you know you need to talk to people and that is exactly where we are missing out today in life that we need to talk to people and talk to the right people and there is a safe haven the sphere that you have built as a legacy for shiv and you know bringing other people who are facing similar or different problems and uh, getting the definition of mental health or mental well-being is also so very different and important because at every stage of life, the definition changes, the meaning changes, the intensity changes. And whether you become an introvert or whether you become an extrovert, there is no particular body types or mind types that uh, this particular illness or symptoms that attack. It is there. It is there. So when you go and make yourself aware, friends, that is the only way to get your knowledge. Uh, awareness is the biggest knowledge and this fair is happening on Sunday. Can you give us more details about the location? Yeah. How so people can get in touch with you? And is uh, there any other participation fee required? No, it's a completely free event. Uh, it's in Livingston High School. Obviously, people who are near in the local area, they can come. It's in the cafeteria. We have almost 38 uh, different participants different uh, kinds of therapy, psychiatrist, multiple psychiatrist, um, multiple different therapy centers. There are group therapy. So, I mean, it's hard for us, me to actually explain it, but there is a huge flyer. I can share it with you guys. Yes, we have, we have there are like, this okay. sort of um, made it so, you know, when we started getting into this journey, we realized there are so many different kinds of therapy. There are so many different kinds of illnesses and where can we help our children? Um, and there are so many even alternate therapies also like art therapy, music therapy, dance therapy. All of these things exist and we just don't know about them. Then there are so many organizations like NAMI, AFSP, um, you know, these are multi, multi millionaire, very well funded organizations which have huge amount of resources. Like we can mm -hmm. just go on them and there are so many good resources over there. But we just don't know because we are so scared to with the word like suicide or we are so scared with the word mental health. So if, if we just can get and see people, there is a um, something called partnership for uh, children of Essex, something called Perform Care. You know, mm -hmm. it's actually free service for all the kids in New Jersey. You can actually access therapy even without paying, but you have to know how to. Wow. So that organization comes. So it's not one or the other. So that's what we are trying to bring in. Um, there are, so the thing about it, this fair, this time, this year, we are doing, we are actually live streaming the whole fair. So mm -hmm. people would be able to, I think we can share the live stream Absolutely. link, but otherwise mm -hmm. people can go to chefsthirdeye.org, uh, mm -hmm. the website, and you would see the live stream link in there. And we are going to be we are going to have panels so the main panel that is there it's about thriving kids like how do we support the thriving kids it's mm -hmm. more about how do you actually uh, give different kinds of resources within the school setting and outside of the school setting how do parents mm -hmm. help their children what kind of resources even exist and there are there is a school psychologist there is a really renowned psychiatrist clinical mm -hmm. psychologist neuropsych what is a neuropsych wow. mm -hmm. so all of these questions could be asked people can even ask questions to these experts during the panel and then in addition to that we also have started doing a mind speak essay competition i don't mm -hmm. even know i know you are in princeton i don't know if the news came all the way till there or not but this competition is actually open to all kids in New Jersey, okay. in middle school and high school. And we 
got this time this year we got 80 plus entries from 26 different school districts beautiful and Thanks, the, this, is, this is not only a, a president and co-founder of shifts third eyes plea it is also a mother's plea a lot of effort lots of love has gone into bringing this organization 38 different exhibitors the kind of information shilpa is sharing here you know you've all heard about job fairs you've heard about matrimonial fairs you've heard about friendship fairs you've heard about food fairs treat mental wellness also just as equally as that and they have created this event called mental wellness fair youth um, youth mental wellness fair so yes. treat it, normalize it talk about it and that is the effort and plea of this mother this founder and the president of shifts third eye uh, the the kind of energy that has gone in to see that none of you none of us and so many people globally who are facing stigma, prejudice, judgment based on these kind of issues. It could be anything. Like I said, it could be as simple as I don't want to eat food today or it could be as difficult as bullying in school. It could be sexual orientation. It could be job pressures. There is no age limit for that, but currently they are focusing on youth. And if you have children at home, um, it's okay to just go there, wander, look around, there could be lots of career opportunities. Your children could pursue by looking at these exhibitors and listening to them. And Actually, to them. it's interesting. There is one, uh, somebody who has come this time from Rutgers mm -hmm. University. It's mm -hmm. a research department. They have psychology research uh, opportunities and they have come to the fair. Too. And these are the people who are coming on their own and they are reaching out. Like till today evening, I was getting entries. So, yeah, and then other thing I was saying, so we have winners for those uh, essay competition yeah. and there are three different judges that we had and those judges are going to share insights, what they read. And these 80 essays, Madhvi, I cannot tell you, like, I can't stop. Like, there were some essays I couldn't sleep for two nights after reading those essays. But these are the kids, they are speaking. And that's what we want. This is the healthy way of doing it. Absolutely. And unless yes, we yes. don't give them a platform, it's not going to be possible. Yes, so, whether it's a picnic, whether it's an essay, whether it's an affair, uh, this fair which is being organized, all this are friendly, happy spaces where you can come, you can talk and get yourself informed so that none of us are shedding that tear and that pain that the Kulkarnis have faced. Now, um, you have spent a beautiful time here sharing so much of information and I personally am going to be at the fair. Uh, friends, if you want to come and meet, let's all talk. Let's also share that information with other schools and organizations also. Uh, there was one question that was pending from my side and I want you to touch on that. Uh, this beautiful website name that you picked up, Shiv's Third Eye. How did you come to that? So we, uh, Shiv is, I mean, Shiv itself is a great name, beautiful name. Uh, mm -hmm. His name came about not because necessarily uh, Lord Shiva. It mm -hmm. came because Shilpa and Vishwas, we were thinking. Uh, and then we just realized, oh my God, Shiv. Yeah, that's perfect name because uh, we had Shiv after 12 miscarriages. Wow. And... Uh, Believe it or not, again, I said, I'm not like the biggest religious person, neither is my husband. But we did go to Nasik, uh, to this place, uh, Trambakeshwar. Mm -hmm. And somehow that prayer apparently turned out to be the our success. And so we just like, oh my God, it was meant to be. Like Shiv, it's perfect. So Shiv was his name. We wanted Shiv's name to be in the, in, in the organization. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then third eye came about because actually it was my daughter's uh, suggestion because she is very much an Amar Chitrakatha person. So she knows uh, Indian mythology and everything very well. Mm -hmm. So she, her sense was that the third eye really opens up, like even though it is supposed to really do the Samar, mm -hmm. but that Samar is basically to make the world better place, to clear out, right? So here we are clearing up the stigma, clearing up the um, prejudices, clearing up uh, all that is bad and trying to bring all the good that is there. So that's yes. how the name came about. 
trying to bring all the good that is there. And of course, uh, there was a lot of pain, uh, that little turmoil that was required to bring this ocean of knowledge, information, and love that you and your family is spreading and bringing more like-minded families. And just like any other fair, any other organization, any other event, come friends, let's all together go there, support Shiv's Third Eye, dot org that is a website and if you want to reach out to shilpa and her team the website is very user friendly very comfortable to navigate and of course uh, shilpa would you throw out that information that if anybody wants to get in touch with you or talk to you or to contribute to this organization uh you're open to that right absolutely and uh one thing i would just quickly mention it People, if they are too far, and I understand it's a Sunday, they might not be able to come all the way to Livingston. You can tune in. It's online for a reason. So try to tune in so that you really see what it is. When, as parents, you try to bring uh, normalcy in case of mental health and talk about it, your child, you never know, even if one child gets help, you don't know what our children are looking at. So if they see that, that my father or mother or my parents are fine with it, they might come to you and they might actually access the help they need it. So please do that. Um, we have a Facebook group as well with Shiv's Third Eye where we have thousand plus members. Uh, again, it has grown organically. All that is there is it's a safe space to come and ask questions. There are many providers there. So people actually either respond to it based on their own experiences or somebody who is an expert. They So it, it's a great place to really uh, figure out as well. Um, yeah. And then everything else, I think on the website, it, it will be quite clear. Exactly. Uh, thank you, Shilpa, for your time today. And I know this is a busy weekend for you planning this event and bringing all the information and panelists and speakers to this event and you took time today to share this information with our viewers also your final words for anybody who's still on two minds thinking is this the place to be there what would you say if you are a parent who want to have the you know happy children i i know happy can be cliched uh, it can be a woke word but happy in the sense of you want you don't want successful children. You do want happy children. Trust me, I have been there. I always thought, what is this happy phrase? But it's happy in the sense they should have joy in their life. And the joy can come from many different ways. So if you want, just come and become the parent that they deserve you to be. Sure. That and is the knowledgeable parent. Yes, and of course, together we will be there at Youth Mental Wellness Fair on Sunday at Thank Livingston High School, and we will meet you there. Thank you, Shilpa. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Madhvi. It was really nice talking to you. Likewise. Thank you.